Hi, I'm the Artie Dans, and big thanks to Leo from Geek Legion of Doom for this opportunity to do a guest review on his channel. He asked me if I would be interested to take a look at the box set of Japanese director Toshiaki Toyoda. To Toshiaki Toyoda. Uh, now, I've never heard of this guy, so I thought, why not? Now, part of me wishes that I hadn't agreed to this, as this was not a collection of films that I enjoyed. And trust me, I tried to enjoy them, but I could only stomach about four and a half out of the six titles in the collection. So, yet I tapped out at about the fifth title of this movie, in this collection, and I just I didn't look back. Uh, so, this is a uh, three-disc Blu-ray set that's releasing from Third Window Films. It's the team who bought us, you know, the excellent one cut of the Dead movie, and uh, you know, big thank you to Third Window Films for bringing us this film. Um, but this box set, it's going to appeal to a very particular audience, and I'm not sure that that particular audience is part of the Geek Legion of Doom community. However, we all need to push our boundaries, right? So let's check this collection out. The first, and in my opinion, the best of the lot, is a film called I'm Flash. So I'm Flash is about a religious guru who meets a woman at a bar. Now he gets drunk and then he goes out on a drive and hits this random guy on a bike who's just trying to return a DVD to a DVD shop. And this results in the woman in the car being put into a coma. So his, uh, his family is very rich and influential, obviously with him being a religious guru. So they try to keep what will potentially be a scandal from the police and the general public. So in order to do that, uh, my chair's moving here, in order to do that and to protect him and the family's reputation, they hire three bodyguards. So what happens is during the film, he decides he no longer wants to be part of the church. He no longer wants to be the head guru. Uh, so he goes to his family and tells them that and realizing that, well, they need him as their cash cow, um, they instruct the three bodyguards to kill him. And they do. And that's the film. Um, it was billed as an action movie. So it's probably the one I was looking forward to the most in this package. But I'll tell you that two scenes of shooting does not mean it's an action movie. It, it, this is just purely a drama. Now, in this movie, there were a couple of actors that I recognized, um, and that made it slightly more enjoyable. Uh, Kiko Mitsuhara uh, from Helter Skelter. Uh, she's the girl that takes over uh, towards the end of the film as the hot new model, if you remember the movie Helter Skelter. That movie's awesome. And uh, Ryuhei Matsuda, he is from the really cool 2017 film before we vanish with one of my favorite actresses, Masami Nagasawa. Um, he's also in a few of these uh, of this director's other films, such as Wolf's Calling and Day of Destruction. So, what did I like about this film? Not a hell of a lot, but uh, at least the story was interesting. The sets were great. I really liked the um, the Guru's house, the church that they were in, and especially the the um, the skull cave where there's all these skulls there and there's a lot of color in the movie it's nice to see a bit of color in the movie it wasn't drab like some of his other films however all the characters were awful i don't think there was one particularly likable character in this film perhaps if i was to say anyone it would be the kid right at the start who's returning the dvd to the store and gets killed he's probably the only likable character and you see him for about three seconds so yeah deal with you know what do you make of that? Um, specifically, the Guru's family is just horrendously awful. Um, I don't know if it's just his interpretation of rich people, but they are just foul people. Um, like all of the director's films, um, this has a strong anti-government message in it. And my assumption is that it's to do with his previous arrest and... Um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? conviction of drug possession so yeah he's probably had this and thought you know what every movie i'm going to make now i'm going to hate the government and it comes across through all of the four and a half movies that i watched in this film and another issue with this film and with all the rest of them is that the shots just linger far too long he it's great that he's getting the actors to actually act out long scenes and we're talking about shots that go for between 30 seconds to a minute so they're nice decent long shots Damn it, are they boring. Uh, and there's not a lot that happens. And generally, the pace of this movie is just far too slow to be enjoyable. So while it's the 
best of the lot. It's certainly not a great film that I would tell you, hey, rush out and watch. The next one that I looked at uh, was Monster Club. Um, I was also excited about this one because it was billed as a horror film. Uh, But it's just another drama. It really is just another drama. The premise was interesting. It's about a man who lives in a cabin in the forest who sends bombs to politicians because he's mad about society and the need to conform to society's rules. Again, a running theme with all of the movies. The cool thing is that he makes all the bombs himself. You get to kind of see him make it. There's a really great uh, point of view shot of uh, him creating the bomb, it getting delivered, and then the person opening it up. So, and that happens towards the start. So that was a, that was a really was one of the good parts of the film. But again, it's slow and it feels like nothing ever happens. I mean, um, the guy experiences some hallucinations of his two dead brothers who are encouraging him to commit suicide. Uh, but at the same time, he's got a sister who's still alive and she's just, you know, always trying to talk to him and help him. So, um, you know, there's a bit of juxtaposition there. And there's some flashbacks of his family's life where he's got this really supportive family, supportive mother. Um, but he's the kind of black sheep of the family, even though he's got a, another brother who's very clearly a punk, but obviously not the black sheep. He seems to be the black sheep. And um, yeah, it's got some good makeup effects. Um, some of the monsters that he sees. One of them is like the Joker. It's got great Joker style makeup. Another one is this monster that's covered in meat. Um, and, and that's it's this kind of reference to him having to kill all of his own food uh, and gut it and skin it. So, you know, that's nice. Um, and there's a, an opening shot of the cabin in the snow. It made me feel cold while I was watching it. But again... Shots are long, they linger, nothing happens, characters are awful, and they're hard to relate to. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't watch this film if I was asked to again. Sorry, Leo. The next one uh, is called Go Seppuku Yourself. This is his newest uh, work, and uh, personally, um, I think that the movie should follow its own advice and go seppuku itself because yeah um what's it about it's uh set in the past where there's a virus that runs through the town's water supply and the government is killing anyone that they seem to suspect has actually poisoned the water uh, and they come across this one guy and they're about to punish him because they think that you know someone has seen him put something in the water supposedly and so there's this long monologue where they have him ready to to kill him um and he just says to them you know killing me won't stop the virus um and i thought yep yeah, great now clearly it was it's the newest film i think it was made this year parallels a bit to everything that's been going on in the world perhaps don't want to make any links does give off that vibe the music in it's good though at least um the tr- music is that traditional style um lots of japanese instruments but again just long takes boring takes just far too much dialogue um i do like the metaphor that the virus uh, is the government to taking the taxes off people. But, um, you know, I get it. Director, you hate the government. Just move on. Just make a different film. Come on. Um, people are going to tell you this movie's good. Don't listen to them. They're lying. Take my advice, please. Next up is a movie called Wolves Calling. So it's hardly a movie. It's a short. It goes for about 15 minutes long. Felt like it was an hour, though really did um again it's just long 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 shots of nothing happening um just a bunch of samurais who are at a temple and then all of a sudden they just pull their weapons out of nowhere because a plastic beach ball comes falls onto the ground and look maybe i wasn't paying enough attention i didn't see where the beach ball came from but way too arty farty for me and i know my name's the arty dance but I'm not into arty farty movies, and this was just way, way too arty farty. Um, unlike Go Seppuku Yourself, the music in this was horrible. Absolutely horrible. It was too loud, it was constant, and it was just a mess. It was real ear destroying stuff. If you don't want your ears to bleed, 
turn it down while you're watching it or do yourself a favor and don't watch it at all. One thing I did enjoy, because I'm trying to find some positives in all of these, I liked the forest setting. Um, and the forest setting was recycled for the next movie, although I should say, because this movie, uh, actually, I actually don't know when this one came out, to be honest. So yeah, it was recycled for the next movie, which was called Day of Destruction. Now, this is the movie that I tapped out in. I lasted 25, min 25 minutes, and I knew that this was going in the same way that all of the other movies in this collection were going, and that is anti-government. Um, I get it. I'm not the great... I'm not the government's greatest fan, but I don't want to constantly watch five movies in a row about, you know, anti-government crap. Um, this one starts off with some type of monster mutation in a mine that then spreads and turns into some type of epidemic in Tokyo. But I couldn't tell you anymore because it really wasn't that interesting. Um, the movie started off in black and white. And I thought, oh, I like this. This is something different. Um... But then I knew straight away that it was going to be a very painful movie to watch when the director decided to show me, step by step, the main character walking through the front door of the mine and to where the mutated monster was. He showed every step. Um, would have gone for, it felt like it went for about five minutes. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. It was just this long shot. And it, the worst part was it was probably about four or five shots. So it wasn't, you know, two, three seconds of a face, two, three seconds of his feet, two, three seconds of something else. It was 60 seconds of me watching the back of him walk. Then it flips to 60 seconds of me watching the front of him walk. And, you know, come on, if you're not going to respect my time, if you're just going to waste it by showing me a guy walking, I can, I can film myself walking and watch it back later. I don't need to see that in a movie. So, Director, if you're going to waste my time, then I'm just not going to give you the time of day to continue watching the rest of your film. And hence, that's what happened. I just couldn't watch it. Um, something interesting. Um, the opening song that plays over the opening credits, it was horrible. It was this ear-piercingly terrible dystopian punk metal song, which is very Japanese-y. If you know those kind of Japanese-y punk songs, those punk metal songs, it's very much in that style. What was interesting, though, were some of the lyrics. Now, they were anti-government lyrics, but they were actually pretty good. They were pretty good lyrics. So um, there was one takeaway from Day of Destruction. It was the lyrics in the opening song. But everything else can just go seppuku itself, to be honest. Now, the final movie in the collection was a title called Hanging Garden. And after I read the description, I could not bring myself to watch it. It was two hours long, and I knew I would hate myself at the end. So... What I ended up doing was I ended up watching a Chinese horror film called Mortal Ouija. And if you know anything about Chinese horror movies, you know that they're terrible. Yet that movie was able to make me happy and wash away the taste, the bad taste of this box set. So um, I'm going to recommend you watch a Chinese horror film called Mortal Ouija over any of the five titles, six titles in this box set. So Leo, sorry, I couldn't be more positive about this collection. I don't want to lie. I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to lie to your audience. But if I had to rate this whole thing out of 10, like you asked me to, I'm going to give it uh, nothing higher than a two. I mean, I wouldn't touch this at all. I'm not the target audience. And if your tastes are similar to mine, then there's a very good chance this is not for you either. If you do want to know more about my tastes, uh, I can head over to my YouTube channel, The Arty Dans. Hopefully, Leo has popped a description somewhere down into the comments below. Um, yeah, so go check it out and you can see the type of movies that I'm into. Um, it's very similar to what Leo covers on uh, this channel, except uh, more of an Asian flavor. Uh, so let me know what you thought of um, this collection if you've seen it in the comments below. Big thank you again to Leo for the opportunity to do this review. Um, hopefully next time uh, I come back, I'll have something a little bit more suitable for both of our communities uh, and both of the ta of our tastes. But uh, yeah, it's a two out of 10. Sorry, Leo. I don't think I could touch this. And uh, third window, maybe more films like this in the future. Thanks. We'll see you guys next time.